Hello everybody, welcome to Movie Libertas, hosted on Logan for Liberty. How are you all doing? <sighs> Doom Annihilation. I wasted money on this movie. <laughs> I should have just rented it. I thought it would be a nice collection to have to my DVD. Oh, uh, okay, well, I, I'm not going to shit on it right away. There are, I guess, some positive things I have to say about it. Maybe, um, this will contain spoilers. So, for the first five minutes, I'm not going to, I'm not going to go into very many, uh, spoilery details until all about five minutes in. Let me just tell you what this movie feels like. Well, it's not just what it feels like. This movie is very obviously a B-movie, uh, which is a either made-for-TV or a straight-to-DVD release. Um, why they would let something like Doom be a B-movie or a straight-to-DVD movie, I have no idea. Now, I have nothing against the idea of a TV movie or a, a straight-to-DVD straight flick. Um... You know, t I'm sure, like, I like The Day After, made in the 80s, and TV studios do have some higher quality, high production stuff, and I just want to make it clear that this Doom Annihilation, the movie, id Software had nothing to do with the movie. When the trailer came out for this movie, it was panned because it looked cheap, it looked cheesy, and... It kind of is. It kind of feels that way. I want, I want really bad to like this movie. You know, so I, I, I can't really go into a diatribe because I don't hate this movie. Um, I want to know who's culpable for this becoming a B movie. I don't know. If I can consider this better than the 2004 or 2005 Doom movie starring Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Um, uh, I mean... I This movie wasn't enthralling to me. Like, when I saw the trailer, everybody was shitting on it. I wasn't really shitting on it. I agreed that it looked like a B-movie. Okay, fine. It's a B-movie. I was still interested... In it, I still wanted to see a Doom movie because I think there is a possibility to enjoy straight to DVD or a TV made for TV movie. Because why can we have high quality shows like The Walking Dead, American Horror Story, <clears throat> uh, Game of Thrones, just all the you know the Star newer Star Trek series. Why can we have these higher quality, higher budget? Why is Stargate SG-1 less cheesy than a lot of straight-to-DVD movies? I have no idea. This movie, I didn't care about the characters whatsoever. I only remember the main character's name because a demon said it. Uh, and I read the subtitle. Lieutenant something, 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 Joan, or Lieutenant Joan, something, something. Um, other than that, I didn't care about any of the characters. I didn't remember any of their names. The subpar acting was distracting. Um, typically, when I leave a movie, I want to feel excited that I just... You know, spent time and money watching something enjoyable. I want something to talk about. This movie is not that. I wish somebody could augment, you know, a video game movie. You know, the I want somebody to go in, make a video game movie, and augment it so it's actually good. Like, like I said, I don't hate this movie. Do I want to rewatch it? Not necessarily. This is a movie that I might, you know, add to like a Halloween list to kind of watch because it's somewhat interesting. 
so I'm going to go ahead and give you a spoiler warning right now. We're about five minutes in. I gave you some of my initial thoughts. I'm going to go into more detail about maybe some scenes that I remember. And there's not much. And I just watched the movie. I don't remember much because it wasn't enthralling. All right, you had your spoiler warning, whether or not I actually go into spoilers. But you got five minutes of me talking about my initial reaction to the movie. And this is fresh. I just stopped the movie. Okay, <laughs> where do I start? I don't remember any of the characters' names. First of all, the movie wasn't enthralling anyway because I didn't care about any of the characters. For some reason, this movie does have a female lead, and that doesn't bother me at all. I don't mind a female lead. I'm 100% okay with, again, female leads. Um, if you look at some of my favorite movies, like top 10 favorite movies... Uh, Halloween, John Carpenter's 1978 Halloween, the female lead is Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, Alien by Ridley Scott, 1979, female lead. Aliens, James Cameron, 1986, female lead. 28 Days Later, Danny Boyle's 28 Days Later, 2002. It doesn't have a female lead, but it has a female co-lead. And it's a good, they're good characters, I care about them. This movie, it was just your, it, it suffered from Captain Marvel Brie Larson syndrome, where they want to make these badass female characters, but for some reason they do not know how to write them. They try to make you care because they try to show some death of her sister or her mom, I think it's her mom, she gives her a cross, but then it's never really, like, you see some flashback of it and then it, I guess it pays off at the end but I don't give a shit <laughs> the main character Joan the lieutenant she doesn't have a personality she's just a brooding badass woman and I don't I, I like badass women I'm a guy I want to see badass women on screen attractive badass women she's cute she's badass but she's cookie cutter she's generic she's Kind of a Mary Sue? I mean, she's not overpowered compared to the other characters, but I don't feel afraid for her. I don't know if it's lack of character development or the fact that she's just generic, you know, uh, soldier. Generic brooding soldier. In reality, all, all, the, all the characters in this movie, I think, are interchangeable with the exception of maybe one Australian guy who's kind of a pussy and runs away a couple times he ends up dying he's the only character that I think is different they tried having an alien type scene in the beginning where they're sitting around a table and you know they're having some I guess quirky dialogue I didn't feel like it was quirky or witty it wasn't that funny um I guess the pilot of the ship there was a Prometheus type pilot. He's kind of a cowboy, kind of a redneck pilot. Uh, they did the same thing in Alien Covenant. And I felt like this was inspired by um, Prometheus and Alien Covenant. I mean, Doom and Alien have always kind of had their uh, similarities in a way. Um, I I'd say that Doom was definitely inspired by Alien. No doubt about that. But they had the pilot, the, the cowboy pilot, not the redneck pilot, because he had a a baseball cap, I think it had an American flag. He was obviously a rural guy, but he was a pilot. And he makes a joke when everybody wakes up from their hyper, or, uh, what would it be, hyper sleep? Hydro sleep? They, they were basically sleeping in pods. I, I can't remember what they refer to it as in all these sci-fi movies for some reason. Um... But he makes a joke, he's like, and I definitely did go through all your stuff, which I was, okay, I guess that's funny. It wasn't funny because it came off in that B-movie cheesy way, the delivery wasn't funny. It was kind of weird, I don't know if it was the acting, the directing, the way the dialogue was written, I'm not sure. And then they're having a conversation around this table, like, do you think you really went through all, all her stuff? And this uh, Asian, Oriental, mixed race woman talking about, she's like, I know he, I know he took them. And they're like, oh, your special pair of underwear? Yeah, they're, they're my, my lucky underwear. It's like, what the, f 
what? I mean, I'm you know, I know that women in an environment with mostly men, they kind of, uh, they, they become part of the group. They acclimize. Is that the word? Acclimate? Acclimate? They acclimate to the group and become one of the guys and they, you know, they talk like that. But lucky pair of underwear, is that something that people actually say? Like, I've heard girls, you know, say some dirty stuff when they're, when they're, you know, in a, a group with men. They, uh, you know, start cussing. I've seen that. They become like a working class type of, you know, fuck this shit type of thing. And they tried doing that, but this guy, Tony Giglio, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. He definitely, I feel like, doesn't know what it's like to be a working class person and have a girl working with you in a, in a job that's more oriented towards men or that attracts more men. Yeah, uh, Tony Giglio, 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 I don't, I don't know his name. Uh, he is from Medford, Massachusetts, and he graduated from Seton Hall University with a Bachelor of Arts degree. I'm assuming in, in film or a videography or something, something like that. Video production, I don't know. Uh, he's been, he's directed several movies. I haven't heard of any of them except for Timber Falls. And I saw Timber Falls back when it came out. And when I, I was still in elementary school when it came out. But I enjoyed Timber Falls. It was a pretty good uh, smaller scale horror movie. I enjoyed it. It was kind of weird, but it wasn't a bad movie. Um, his other movies include Soccer Dog, the movie, In the Enemy Hands, Chaos, Timber Falls, Extraction, I've never seen that. SWAT Under Siege. Uh, Doom Annihilation. And he was the writer for Doom Annihilation. Death Race Beyond Anarchy. Death Race 3 Inferno. Death Race 2. Timber Falls. Chaos and Enemy Hand. Soccer Dog Movie. And he's been a crew member on stuff like Dante's Peak. Quiet Days in Hollywood. Liar Liar. Uh, T2 3D Battle Across Time. Uh, yeah. Jingle All the Way. Bulletproof, Escape from L.A., he was a production assistant, a uh, set production assistant, Celtic Pride, Fear, Heat, Kicking and Screaming, The Quick and the Dead. Um, he was an actor in Kicking and Screaming, a singing freshman, and he acted in an episode of Lois and Clark, the Dean Cain Superman show. I mean, this movie it was incompetent? So yeah, I was talking about the scene... I didn't really, like, it didn't do what I think he was trying to do. Um, it was paying homage to Alien, obviously. And I think that was his attempt at having some character development and establishing that this is a tight-knit group. But I was, it either didn't work well because the dialogue was s stupid or some of the acting was subpar, therefore distracting. Maybe it was a combination of both. The dialogue was stupid, and then the actors weren't that good. It's like they did, like they took the first take, the first or third take of every single scene, and it's it's frustrating because I want good B movies, and I think we're kind of getting them with Netflix and Amazon Prime and Hulu. We're getting some good original stuff. But I want something that doesn't belong to one of these streaming services that's available across platform that is a directed DVD movie to be good. Because it's basically the same. <clears throat> it, you would expect it to have a higher quality than a TV show. But I've seen TV shows with a better quality. Now, the script in this movie is pretty fucking stupid. Like, I know I'm. I, I don't want to go on a diatribe. About this movie. Because I really want to like it. But I think... Let me let me just say some positive stuff about it. It is more faithful to the storyline of the game Doom. Of the Doom series. They open a portal. And demons from hell come through it. Unlike the 2004 or 2005 uh, movie. With Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Carl, Ur Carl Urban, and... Oh, I can't remember her name. It's gonna bother me. That blonde girl who plays Art, 
the blonde girl who plays Carl Urban's sister. She's also in Gone Girl, and she's in other stuff. Can't remember her name. I'll just look her up real quick. Uh, let's see. Doom 2005. Yeah, it is 2005. Um, I'm going to feel really stupid. Let's do... Cast. Oh, Rosamund Pike. I feel stupid. And Doom 2005 had other good actors. It, it had uh, uh, Richard Brake, who I think is a fantastic actor. Um... You know, obviously doing The Rock Johnson, who's a pretty good actor. He's he's actually a great actor. You, the Rock is enthusiastic, therefore he kind of fits these roles. He can play a bad guy, he can play a good guy. Carl Urban's a great actor. He's in The Boys right now. That's blowing up. Richard Brigg has been in some Rob Zombie movies and other stuff. So, you know, these aren't terrible actors. But in this movie, what was my point? <laughs> I lost my point because I distracted myself looking this up. Oh, yeah. The the line delivery was kind of stupid. There was a scene which is... there After they get attacked by, you know, the, the zombies. Because Doom has zombies in it. I don't know if Doom 2016... It has their equivalent of zombies, kind of. But, you know, uh, Doom 3, that video game had zombies in it. You, you have the humans that have been turned into uh, creatures have been mutated by whatever, like, possession or whatever the hell the demons do to them. In this movie, after they encountered the zombies, and then they encountered the imps, which are the monsters in Doom that throw the fireballs, and they're, you know, they're bigger stature. They're the second most prominent enemy in the Doom series. They... After they encounter them, there's a scene where they're, again, sitting around the table. Their guns are just laying on the table. Their helmets are off, and they look kind of relaxed. Like, do you not know how to write a movie? Like, who does that? So that's one thing I give Doom 2005 credit for, is you feel the tension all the way through. Even if Doom 2005, maybe you can call it generic... You can say it's not faithful to the storyline. You can say it's kind of silly. It has uh, generic characters. You know, you don't really care if they die. Fine. Whatever. But at least you could say the script, like the scenes were set up in a much more competent way. It'd be like in, in uh, Saving... No, no. What's a good movie? Uh, yeah, let's just say something like Black Hawk Down. Saving Private Ryan. If they're in the middle of a war zone, and then they just go in this building, and they decide to sit around the table, they take off their helmets, they're not even holstering their, they're not even holding their guns, it's placed on the table, and they're just having a, a nice little conversation. Now, th there was a scene like that, you know, there is downtime in these movies, and I'm fine with downtime in these movies, but the setup is stupid, and they conveniently had enough chairs for every single one of them around this table. Every character that had survived up to that point, and then the other ones, the survivors that they found in this uh, moon facility, Mars moon facility, Phobos, I think it is, or Phobos, I think it is Phobos. <clears throat> so, it's just stuff like that that's so stupid and distracting, which really made it hard for me to be immersed in this. So I want to say a good thing about this movie. The set, I thought was fine. I loved the set. Now you could say the set looked generic, it looked like a B-movie, but honestly, <clears throat> you're not going to tell if a set is a B-movie or if it's generic if the movie is done competently. Um, an example is Star Wars A New Hope. The sets were small. Especially when they're inside. They're generic. Especially the opening scene in the hallway. When the Empire is boarding the ship. Right? And Darth Vader comes in. Stormtroopers come in. Kill the rebels. And Princess Leia gives the disc to the droids. Whatever. If that was a, if that was a bad movie. Or it wasn't competent. That would look really stupid and generic. So, the stuff like that. So, I thought the set was fine. Uh, the color grading was a little too dark. It almost, in some scenes, specifically with the zombies, 
suffered from uh, Alien vs. Predator, Aliens vs. Predator Requiem. I suffered from that dark grading a little bit. I thought the imps looked pretty good, but where I, I was almost getting immersed again, I was like, they're killing some zombies, that's pretty badass. Oh, here's the imps. Now that's badass, that's what I want to see. I want to see some imps, and unlike Doom 2005, they actually threw the fireballs. But the fireballs, they looked so fucking cheesy, it took me out of it. I lost the immersion again. I was like, okay, that looks bad. I mean, please, just do better. If you're a movie, do better. The portal looked like crap. I, like, I don't know. Stargate had a better portal. Why couldn't you have a better portal? It should have just been more like the game. I, it's for, because I want to like this movie. I gave it a chance thinking it wasn't going to be that bad. And it suffered. It, it really does suffer. It's, unfortunately, it's flaws outweigh what it does good. And what it does good is few and far in between. Like, I thought the casting would have been fine if the actors were good, if the characters had more personality, but they're all generic and interchangeable. Um, the girls act like guys, the guys act like girls, it's stupid. <laughs> um, the scene with the zombies, because it had such a dark grating, it was hard to, you know, really get into it. I was excited with the zombies when that came in. Okay, you know, whatever. There were some bits where they tried to be comedic a little bit with the, you know, interaction between the people. I didn't like that. Um, the main character had a former love interest. I didn't feel anything between them. It wasn't obvious. Um, and another thing that was distracting is because you had subpar actors and then you had other actors who looked like they, you know, should be starring in a TV show or at least be a co-lead in a, a bigger Hollywood movie or an A-list movie. So it was even more distracting because you saw that contrast. It, it, it was like, say for example, you took a sci-fi, uh, S-Y-F-Y original movie. No, let's say that you took, well, how about, let's take um, Leonardo DiCaprio and let's put him in Sharknado 3. <laughs> That's how distracting it would be, because you, in, in, let's say Leonardo DiCaprio is nailing this role, is acting his heart out, but he's in Sharknado 3. Wouldn't that be kind of distracting, this cheesy movie with subpar actors and stupid dialogue, nobody's taking it seriously, and then you have Leonardo DiCaprio, who won an Oscar, and you know, is giving a great performance. That's what this felt like. Again, I wanted to like it. I mean, why is it hard to make a video game movie? There's people out there... I know there's speculation, different theories of why it's hard to make a video game movie. I think one of them is is that uh, video game movies are... Or video games are interactive. Therefore, when you make it in a movie, you lose the interactivity. I think you lose the ability to interact with it. Therefore, it's not going to do well. Which I think is really fucking stupid. Because you know you're going into a movie. You're not going to interact with it. You know you're watching it. And movies are for movie goers as well. So the movie goers should like a competent movie regardless of the source material. How come we're able to make successful comic book movies? Comic book movies, if you translated them directly, would be terrible. And we have plenty of examples of campiness not being very good. Um, also, it's like, and, and an another theory is that, well, video game Plots just aren't that good. They, there are B-movies within themselves. Okay, so what? Take out some of the cheese. Tighten up the plot a little bit. There you go. The only reason why video game plots aren't that good is because a video game is dragged out. A movie isn't as dragged out. A movie, a good movie, is c confined within its runtime, and then that's it. It's fine. You can do that if you must make a trilogy. You can do that. Why this doesn't happen, I have no idea. It's just mind-boggling to me. I 
there's just so much I want to say. I, I didn't write a list because these are my fresh thoughts. This movie, again, frustrates me and kind of like I, I'm down a little bit because yesterday I just watched Joker. That was a great movie. Talk about, you know, adapting comic book material into a big screen movie. I mean, listen, just, I don't know. The material works. It works. We know it works. We have, we have plenty of sci-fi horror movies that work. Alien and Aliens are prime examples of sci-fi movie, sci-fi horror movies that work. The first Terminator movie, that's a sci-fi horror movie. It works. Uh, Predator, that works. I'm talking about the, the original one with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Why do these movies work? And we have, we have zombie movies that work. 28 Days Later is a fantastic movie. 28 Weeks Later is a fantastic movie. Dawn of the Dead was a competent movie. Night of the Living Dead is a cult classic. You have competent movies in the genre. So so why not... Why can't we take these basic plots? I mean... I don't know. It... It frustrates me. Like I said, I really wanted to enjoy this movie, but I couldn't get into it. Again, I'll just highlight it. Subpar acting. Stupid dialogue. Uh, juxtaposition between decent actors and terrible actors is even more distracting. The CGI in the movie is horrendous. It's not horrendous, but it's not immersive. Like, I've seen better quality stuff from YouTube movies and TV shows. Like a web web series, like not not YouTube Red YouTube series, but like Corridor Crew effects. I've seen they've done better stuff. I don't know. like. Why wouldn't you just give a bigger budget and and I want B movies to be good. I just, I really do. So let me compare. In contrast, let me juxtapose Doom Annihilation 2019 with Doom from 2005. I like that Doom Annihilation was more faithful to the story. I liked... I thought the zombies in Doom 2005 were better. Because they each had a different characteristics. Like, they were actually people. In Doom Annihilation... What I what I think they did was, was they came up with a generic sort of monster zombie-ish design, where they're all bald, so they could reuse the same actors over and over again. If they all look identical, because the girl zombies, mutants, whatever you want to call them, looked like the guy zombies and mutants. They didn't look human. They looked like zombies. And I think they turned down the color grading. Made it darker so you wouldn't notice that the same actors were being used. And that hurt the film, in my opinion. But with the imps, I mean, we all expect the imps to look kind of the same anyway, so you could get away with that. The imps looked good. The set was alright. I thought it was fine. Because it, it gave me like a Resident Evil, uh, the first Resident Evil movie sort of vibe to it. And I thought that was a competent movie. Like, if. When people say there's no good video game movies, I think the first Resident Evil movie is highly underrated. I I don't understand why people or why that movie was panned as bad as it was. It I got a 34% critics rating. Let's look it up real quick. Oh no, the audience score is 67%. Well, that's a that's good. Okay, whatever. I don't know. I'll I'll never understand. I'll never understand why it's hard to make a competent video game movie. Comparing this to to uh, 2015. So the thing I liked about this was the imps actually kind of felt like Doom imps. They threw fireballs. I liked that they threw fireballs instead of just being a mutated human in Doom 2005. I liked that they actually opened a portal to hell instead of the stupid metaphorical this place is always hell and it all this place was hell and it always has been 
from uh, Carl Urban in 2005, where hell is a metaphor. Um, I thought the set from both movies were fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, that was, they're both fine. 2005, Doom was a more competent movie than Doom Annihilation because, you know, it was actually a Hollywood movie. Because for some reason, B-movies are just terrible and cheesy and they can never be good for some reason. If if you know good B-movies or made-for-TV movies, please let me know in the comment section below. I'm, I'm dying for a good one. Just please. <laughs> ah, and that's it. I, I don't know what else to say. I'll just highlight what I said and then end it on this note. The character, the acting was subpar. The decent actors, juxtaposed with the bad actors, was distracting. The characters were interchangeable. I didn't care about any of them. I didn't remember their names. There wasn't any character development. The zombie scenes were lackluster. The CGI was horrendous. Um... The story, the way the story panned out was really stupid. The ending was cheesy and trash and anticlimactic. Uh, I felt like they could have done better. So that's it. That's that's pretty much it. Um, so as I said before when I did my Joker review, I personally refuse to rate movies kind of I do concede like it's not because I don't think there's any objective standards to judge a movie with um I just find it difficult to put an arbitrary number letter or rating on a movie based on my subjective interpretation of the application and execution of these standards that make a great movie you know that constitute a good movie Every movie has faults, and there's too many facets to plug in to determine whether or not a movie does great in certain aspects. Every movie has faults, so it matter. It depends on whether or not what is good about the movie outshines the faults of the movie. So, the questions I like to ask is there's five basic principles that I'm looking for that I personally enjoy the movie. Do I recommend the movie? Would I want to rewatch the movie? What are the flaws distracting? And would I add this movie to my collection? So in other words, well, I mean, those those uh, questions are self-explanatory. Personally, did I enjoy the movie? I enjoyed certain aspects of it. But overall, I didn't enjoy the experience. No, I was bored towards the end. I wanted the movie to end. It was a chore to get through, unfortunately. And that's sad because I wanted to like it. I didn't have any expectations other than to be surprised that I might actually like it. Do I recommend the movie? Um, maybe for a really hardcore Doom fan and you just want to see anything related to Doom. I guess I recommend it in that sense would I rewatch the movie yeah I would rewatch the movie if it was on TV and I had nothing else to do or if I was showing a friend or if I was doing an in-depth review I guess I'd rewatch the movie maybe I'll rewatch it around Halloween because I mean it's a decent Halloween flick I guess were the flaws distracting? 100%. I couldn't stop thinking about the subpar acting. Couldn't stop thinking about the terrible execution. The terrible dialogue. How I didn't care about the characters. The juxtaposition. The obvious contrast between the decent actors and the bad and mediocre actors. Would I add this movie to my collection? If it was on sale for $4.99. And like a bargain bin, I would buy it and put it in my sleeve because why not watch it on Halloween? Because it's a decent Halloween flick. There's worse horror movies out there. So, I mean, in reality, like, if if I was giving it a rating based on these, you know, five things, it would get like a one and a half or two 
out of five. It just wasn't that great of a movie. You're not missing anything if you don't watch it. If you just want to see a Doom movie, f go ahead and watch it. In reality, I'd rather if you gave me the if you put a gun in my head and you said, "All right, you're gonna watch Doom 2005 or you're gonna watch Doom Annihilation made in 2019." I'm gonna say Doom 2005 all the way, because as generic as Doom 2005 was, at least it works within its own context. And that was movie Libertas, um, one of the only libertarian movie podcasts on the internet. I am trying to fill a niche market. Um, I hope you all have a great day. Um, and there's a new movie Libertas episode every single Monday. And sometimes you'll get an extra episode within the week if I go and see a movie that I really enjoy and want to do a review on. I hope you all have a fantastic day. And you should probably stay away from Doom Annihilation unless you just want to add it to your horror collection. Go for it. Have a good one.